Right now is Pennsylvania Congresswoman Madeline Dean, a Democratic member of the House Judiciary and Financial Services Committees. She's also an impeachment manager in Donald Trump's upcoming Senate trial. May I ask you just to pick up quickly as I say hello to you, my friend, um, about Mariana's last point there. Is it likely that an impeachment trial would last a month? I mean, we know the first one did. It, the first one didn't have as many elements to it that were so out there in the, in the public uh, not as much to be revealed, right? You think this one would take a whole month? Well, good afternoon. I'm pleased to be with you again, Alex. Uh, I don't know about the timing. I am uh, aware, of course, that we will be uh, presenting the article of impeachment on Monday. It looks very clear uh, that the Senate has chosen, by way of agreement that I respect, uh, to uh, hold the trial for two weeks in order to give the president's team more time to prepare. I will tell you that the impeachment managers uh, on our side will be fully prepared at whatever time the trial begins. I don't believe uh, that the trial will take anywhere near what the last trial took. Uh, as you say, the evidence is so abundant, and uh, many of us lived it, including many of these senators, uh, and um, the, the evidence is overwhelming and, and damning. And, and how much will that make a difference this time around, given the wealth of information out there to purse through that it's public it's been public out there for everybody to see not just impeachment managers not just senators uh, that will be inside of the, the chamber they're going through this everybody has seen this and heard this how much will that make a difference i think it'll make a great difference a, a very sad and tragic difference because what we're talking about in impeachment two for president trump is that he incited a riot. He gathered a mob in order to have them come and attempt insurrection, attempt a coup to keep him in power, to overturn a free and fair election. And that mob was unleashed on the Capitol. They came in hoping to hang Vice President Pence, hunting down members of Congress, hoping to assassinate uh, Speaker Pelosi, uh, also hunting down members of the media whom he called uh, the enemy of the people. This was as a result of five and a half years of lies by this president, and of course, the last four or five months of the big lie, the lie that the election was somehow fraudulent or stolen from him. Uh, he must be held accountable for what he did in the lead up to it, and of course, what he failed to do after the insurrection. Well, you are well aware that there are some Republicans who are pushing back against impeachment. Let's take a listen to Senator Lindsey Graham. The post-presidential impeachment's never occurred in the history of the country for a reason, that it's unconstitutional, it sets a bad precedent for the presidency, and it continues to divide the nation. What's your response to that? Sadly, Senator Lindsey Graham has uh, lost all his credibility, and simply repeating a lie doesn't make it so. If he didn't learn that from this failed presidency, I don't know when he will. It is most definitely constitutional. It's also by way of common sense. Otherwise, if you say you can't impeach a president and disqualify him from future office, we are saying, or I should say Senator Graham is saying, that a president at the end of his term can go on a crime spree because they can't do anything about it. The Constitution does not provide for that. Lindsey Graham knows that. He's just avoiding a very difficult uh, vote for him and his conscience. Let's take a listen to what uh, Republican Congressman Van Taylor said a bit earlier on MSNBC. Here's that. It's, it's very clear to me the First Amendment of the Constitution protects free speech and political speech. And so he, I, I think that it would be enormously difficult uh, to prosecute him successfully in a, in a federal district court for, for the crime of his speech. Uh, so the question is, was there a criminal intent? Have you seen anything, have you heard anything that suggests Donald Trump's involvement in the riot went beyond his tweets and his public statements? Well, I think the world witnessed what he has done uh, in terms of inciting this riot. And let's be really clear here. What Donald Trump will be tried for in the Senate is uh, presidential crimes against the Constitution. Uh, this is not like any other case. Free speech, the claim of free speech here does not apply, uh, just as there are limitations to free speech in the civil world uh, and in the uh, sat statutory world. I can't scream fire in a crowded uh, movie theater. 
the president is in a wholly different place. And what we see as a result of his rise and his lies that incited a base and incited a riot where five people wound up dead. Free speech does not apply here. A very key distinction you're making there. Uh, let's talk about the New York Times reporting that Trump plotted to fire his acting attorney general, that being Jeffrey Rosen, in the final days of his presidency and replace him with someone willing to pressure Georgia officials to overturn its election results. That floated replacement, Jeffrey Clark, has denied that he devised any plan to oust Rosen. But what does all this suggest about the lengths to which Donald Trump was willing to go to hold on to power? Well, to your very point, to the depths and desperation that this president, this failed former president, was willing to go. And the only thing that stopped uh, Clark from uh, succeeding with Donald Trump in getting rid of the acting attorney general was uh, the threat of mass resignations. And that didn't, uh, I think, brighten in Donald Trump some thought of, oh, my goodness, maybe I'm going too far. What it brought to him was the reality that if there is a mass resignation in the Department of Justice, it would overshadow his claims of fraud. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's just further evidence of the depths and desperation, and sadly, of those who would help this failed president. Guess what he was trying to do? He was desperately trying to hold on to power by trying to throw out millions of citizens' votes. It's a, a despicable low time in our country. That's why I feel a solemn duty as an impeachment manager uh, to take this case to the Senate and to ask them for all of history, will you indict, will you convict this president and disqualify him from ever holding office again? Hmm. Uh, on another note, Capitol Police, as you know, are investigating a report that uh, one of your colleagues, Republican Congressman Andy Harris, tried to take a gun onto the House floor on Thursday. Does that concern you? And why are the recently installed metal detectors, why are they so controversial for some Republicans? You know, as I read that story, I thought, think of how we ask our children to, in, as they go into school, in many schools, to walk through magnetometers. This is where we've become, where we've gotten in this country. And yet a lawmaker who was hunted down the day before uh, is so prideful of I don't know what that he disrespects the Capitol Police who are only trying to keep us safe uh, by trying to bring his gun to the floor. I have a right to be safe in my workplace, as do all of my colleagues. And I also believe I have a responsibility to respect those who work there and want to keep us safe. I think it was shameful behavior. Pennsylvania Congresswoman Madeline Dean, our friend, thank you so much for joining us, and do stay safe at work and otherwise.